I dream for all of us to own wardrobes with garments made from sustainable sources, including fair wages for the makers. I aim to motivate and inspire viewers to see the clothes they wear as an expression of their personality and their beliefs. This is the Slow Wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello, welcome to a new episode of the Slow Wardrobe podcast. My name is Linda, I'm your host, and today I'll mostly be talking about the knitting projects and one crochet project that I'm working on, um, followed by a little section about layering scarves and shawls. I'm the queen of layering, I layer everything, and that includes wearing scarves or shawls together and they can be wildly different from each other and then still look fantastic together and really lift an outfit. So there's a section about that after this opening, which is an update on my knitting and my crochet progress. So before I get stuck into knitting and crochet, a quick update about where we're at. It is, today is Thursday the 16th of April. So we're in the fourth week of lockdown and I'm filming this from my familiar little corner of my studio. We should probably have a lot less background noise today. Oh, talk about background noise. I found out last time what the problem was with the buzzing noise that I got. It turns out to be the lights, uh, the spotlights that are mounted on the ceiling here in the studio. I had those turned on and that's what caused the buzzing. It was different in different rooms and whatever and I thought it had something to do with my phone turned out to be the silly lights. So lights are turned off. What you're seeing me with is just the outside light coming through the front window. Normally when I film these sections I feel quite self-conscious because there'll be a large number of people passing the window seeing me talk into nothingness without somebody across from me. People don't necessarily notice the um, camera straight away so then they stand and stare at me to see what I'm doing before they eventually give up and walk on. I'm then also always kind of quietly keeping my fingers crossed that they don't start a conversation about what I'm doing because they have no idea that the windows here are made of single panes of glass and they carry the sound extremely loudly. So I always have visions of people's voices carrying through and being audible on the podcast that I'm trying to film and then not being able to edit them out and whatever. Anyway, none of that here because of course the whole village uh, looks and feels fairly deserted. The car park, which is normally overflowing, has a smattering of cars in it, one of them mine. There are no cars parked uh, along the roadside, which there normally are as well, and um, lots less people walking by, so it's nice and quiet. People keep asking me how I'm coping with uh, this lockdown situation and I keep wanting to say I get my kicks out of meeting people online and meeting them at the shows. So of course that reality hasn't quite hit yet because we're about to miss uh, the first show that I was going to be present at, which is Wonderwall in Wales. Um, week and a half from now and there'll be an online event instead. I'll, I'll try and be part of that of course. So I haven't really missed that yet because I haven't missed any shows yet. I did uh, unravel the first one of the year and that the whole virus thing was something that was rumbling in the background but it didn't feel near us yet at the time. It probably should have done but it didn't. So we got through that show uh, with flying colours and things were looking great. First uh, week or two after the virus struck, um, I think 
um, we were all as shell shocked as each other and um, my online sales literally collapsed overnight. And I want to extend a thank you for all of you who have been supporting me and placing some orders online of various different goodies. I try and get them out to you as fast as I can. DPD Local is still delivering for me here in the UK. In fact, they are loving this. They told me, well, one of the drivers told me because of course everybody's at home, so their deliveries are very successful. And it's very easy for them to pull up right outside my studio and a lot of other addresses where they have to either pick up or deliver. So crazily enough, uh, although they're busy, uh, the lockdown situation makes their lives easier. And now that everybody is used to the social distancing thing when they pick up and deliver parcels, and I must say I'm impressed with how they are all dealing with that, uh, things are running very smoothly for them. So my UK deliveries with DPD Local for bigger orders are still going as planned. And I'm lucky in the sense that the post office is about 100 or 150 yards down the road from me right here. So um, I try to minimize the number of times a week that I go there with my parcels. So I try to make it two or three times a week tops. But they're all running fine. They have a social distancing system there and I drop off my parcels using their drop and go system as well, which means that I can just dump my parcels and leave and I don't have had, have any interaction with anybody really. So that's working well for international parcels and for the little parcels like um, the um, darning wools that are right next to me here. You can see some of them right next to me here on the wall. Um, the 96 different colors of darning wool. My goodness, have the sales of those flown in the last couple of weeks, including things like darning eggs and darning mushrooms. It's a fantastic idea that uh, lots of people are giving that kind of stuff a go now that they're stuck at home. And um, I will definitely be darning socks again in the next couple of days. Um, I'll show you some socks, actually. Finally, diving into the first segment of uh, knitting and crochet. Of course, I have no trouble talking <laughs> for hours <laughs> at the camera. I'm always worried that I, when I start um, filming these that I don't have enough to say. And... Um, maybe it's partially the nervousness that I just then start talking and that I end up overrunning much longer than I thought I would. So back to the knitting and the crochet and talking about socks. My husband is uh, gleefully going through his uh, home knitted or me knitted sock stash and picking out the ones that need a little bit of TLC from me. And um, I've asked him to do that after I finished the latest pair of socks that I was making for him that I showed you last time. They're finished now. I've put one on one of my uh, homemade sock blockers and uh, so this is one of them. This was yarn that I bought at Unravel. You can see that it's quite a long sock. I've crumpled it up a little bit. He loves his socks long and it's a huge size as well. He's got size 12 feet. So long socks in more ways than one. It's got my favorite um, heel flap and gusset with a par eye of partridge heel. And it is uh, knitted uh, top down, which uh, I like as well. And then just has the very simple kind of decreases for the toe on both sides. Very straightforward, standard sock pattern, but in this wonderful self-striping yarn that I bought, bought from the Yarn Badger at Unravel. And Boy, it's just so lush, isn't it, working with the self-striping yarn because you constantly keep wanting to see the color that comes next, even though you've seen it before. So it's very easy to keep going. And in my case, I have knitted a lot of these socks watching uh, some TV later on in the evening, and then I can just knit without looking at it at all. 
So the evening knitting just went blindly and the daytime knitting was extremely enjoyable with this self-striping yarn. So um, I didn't actually think of it, but I will show you some of the uh, sock darning the next time that I'm planning to do. And I'll bring some of my uh, darning tools in with me to show you as well, in case you're interested. I think I owe you um, an update as well on the uh, big cashmere wrap that I started darning for my husband. So first project and finished the socks. Now on to the next one, and uh, which is a crochet project. I don't know whether I've shown any of it on the podcast, but this project actually started with a bag of yarns that I had collated because of the colours that are in a throw that I have. This is a wool throw that I bought at Woolfest. I'll show you a proper close-up of it now because you really have to see it up close in order to appreciate the different colours and the interesting weave that, um, this, that makes up this throw. So what I did um, at the time after buying the throw and staring at it to try and make out the different colours is I looked through my uh, stash of soliloquy yarns and pulled out all the different colours that are in this throw with the idea of designing a garment that would use all those different colours and trying to use them in a similar kind of um, balance, colour balance to this throw. Not that I don't like myself setting challenges because that of course would not have been easy at all. Anyway, fast forward three or four years and I was looking for some other yarn in my stash and I stumbled across this bag of yarns that I still hadn't done anything with. And I was looking through my stash because I wanted to pull yarns together to start crocheting. And the crochet idea came from a video that I saw of Christy Glass Knits. Now I remember that I have actually talked about this. Um, she was wearing her version of a pattern called Ziggy Interrupted, a scarf, I'll show it to you here. And I was looking for different yarn colors to do my own version of Ziggy Interrupted or an adaptation of it. So I will show you the different colors of Soliloquy that I had pulled aside as being present in this throw. Get them all out and then there we are. It's these colors. Can you see them? There's five of them plus white. I don't know why I haven't got my white here. One, two, three, four. Oh, there we are. So it's got this really nice yellowy green color. It's a difficult color to name actually. What would I call this? What would you call this color? It's interesting, isn't it? I don't even, I think it was a color that was dyed for me by Anne from Artisan Yarns. I think she dyed this for me. And it's somewhere in between yellow and green. It's definitely in this throw, as is this beautiful lilac color, this gorgeous purple, a really bright and raspberry kind of red, and then this jeansy blue plus white. So those are the six colors that are in the throw. And I found the bag. I thought, am I ever going to get around to doing this, this design? 
uh, while I was looking for a handful of colors to crochet with. I thought, you know what, I'm going to use these for the crochet project. And in the original, there is one variegated color. So I looked amongst my variegated colors that I had leftovers and found this, which is the remnants of a ball of Here Be Dragons, which is a colorway that was dyed for me on my soliloquy yarn by Heather from Sparkle Duck. And it so happens that this color goes extremely well, this multicolor goes extremely well with those five other colors. They really pick up on each other. So Here Be Dragons seems to have all those five semi-solids in it, plus an orangey color, which of course is missing in this mixture and isn't in the original throw. But I really liked the fact that it was in this multicolor. So I started making my little squares, crocheting my little squares, which have, which are all made using one color in the center and then a square around it in the second color. And then they get put together, they get sewn together. I then came up with the idea to add an orangey color which is dyed by the natural Amanda from the Natural Dye Studio, which goes extremely well with this multicolor as well. And it's just one of these colors that I can't really wear it particularly well. It doesn't suit me very well, but I love it. So I thought, well, as a contrast on my little squares, it'll work really well. And then I'll sew them together. So what I wanted was a very narrow border if you like and then I'm going to use that those borders those orangey borders to then sew together I'll show you close-ups as we go of all of this of course and what I have done is and I'll show you a close-up of that as well here is I have turned over my little square before adding that third round, that orange round, because I liked the back or what you would normally see as the back better as a front. So I like playing with things like that and not sticking with well, what you tend to use to do. So, you know, actually look at this by itself and what would look good. So the uh, little square has got two rounds going in the same direction, the center and the first square. Then it's being turned over and then it's got that narrow border going in the opposite direction of the other two. And then I'm going to put them together. And whether or not it's going to end up like a Ziggy interrupted, I have no idea at this point. I'm just doing lots and lots and lots of the little squares and then I'll start playing with sequencing and see whether I like the rhythm of colors that I end up with and whether I'm going to make something small or whether I'm going to combine it with a zigzag pattern that's in the original Ziggy Interrupted. I don't know yet. What I'm hoping is that it's going to be quite... Uh, like delicate and small, a bit like the uh, Sophie Degas scarves that I absolutely adore and that are made of a much finer yarn still than my soliloquy. And if I end up with something that really works, then I'll uh, put the kits together and make it available. Um, but we'll see how we go. So I'll keep posting updates on this, but there was a little bit more background as to what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Uh, for your information, the size of the hook I'm using is a two and a half millimeter, millimeter, two and a half milliliter. 
two and a half millimeter hook on a uh, yarn that runs 600 meters per 100 grams. So it's a heavy lace weight or an extra fine four ply. I still always call it a three ply, which is what it's closest to the old fashioned three plies that used to be used for sock knitting. So that's where I'm at with my crochet project. Next on the list is the jumper that I've been showing you and that is sitting right next to me. And thank you for all the feedback that you've given me on last time when I talked about it. Uh, as I said then, I've nipped it back a little bit to make it uh, look le less like a sack on um, her because of course with those narrow shoulders and those non-existing arms, it rather hangs off her. And I got some suggestions to maybe consider making it into a short sleeve top, which I think could work, but I want to show you the difference of what this looks like when you see it here and what it looks like without the sleeves, just as it is now on a body my size. And I'm kind of in between a UK size 16 and 18, probably more like an 18 at the moment. So I want to show you what it's like around my shoulders and around the bust, etc. And then consider again whether you still would like it without sleeves like that or whether it clearly needs something more. So I'll put the photograph in here to show you. And um, I haven't made any progress. It's been really a combination of the unsettledness of the last couple of weeks, which introvert or not, of course, I have felt just as acutely as everybody else. So haven't really been able to get my head in the right place to start working out the decreases for the sleeves. These are quite wide armholes at the moment because they are having to accommodate quite wide arms, as you can see on me. And then, of course, they have to taper down. So I want to do that in a special way. I think I've talked about that already as well. Um, it's got an unusual combination of knitting directions going on in the body, and I want to replicate that in the sleeves. But I have to be in the right kind of place to work that out, and preferably do, do it during the day. And I've just been very focused on trying to keep everything here running and trying to stay in business in the first place without uh, being tied up in these sums. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to uh, get on with that. But that's the reason why it, I'm not showing any progress here. So now, one of the other reasons that I haven't been making any progress with that is that I got completely and I'm still completely absorbed with these little checkerboard scarves that I've been knitting. You've probably seen me all over the place already with the two, the first two all linen ones that I knitted. Oh, this is also I need to show you. Look at this. It's I've just got it folded in half and it's not straight. Do you see that it's kind of a little bit curved. They all do that. I have no idea why. You just go back and forth. You do the same thing in both directions and they all have a curve. I mean, look at, here's the red one. Well, actually, this is not as bad. The red one is a little bit straighter. And still though, it that has a curve as well. Kind of slightly curving in that direction. So the red and the blue then I did the first combination of linen and cumulus. And look at this. It's even worse. And after blocking it, when you just push and pull it a little bit, this curve comes into it. I mean, it's a considerable curve. It's actually lovely when you put it on. That works quite well, that curve. I can either put it around my neck once or twice. 
and the fact that it's slightly curved seemed to help. In terms of rows and stitches, this is identical to the linen ones, but it's slightly longer. And as a result, it's just long enough to put around your neck twice, which I love. I love this kind of look when it gets chilly. Part of the layering trick, because you can wear, of course, this with something else that's bigger and in a different contrast in color underneath it. Show you more of those ideas later. Or even layer two of these little scarfies. That works well as well. So this was number three. I'm still working on number four, which I will show you now. I was hoping to finish that yesterday evening, but that was wishful thinking. I wasn't actually as far ahead with it as I thought I was. And I started freewheeling with this one. So this is the one that is in um, Cumulus in the magenta color and in this super bright pink linen. I love it. There's slight color difference with the, the dark teal. There's not really much color difference at all. And then the color difference or the, the uh, effect of the checkerboard is all achieved uh, through the difference in texture between the yarns and very little color difference here. This is a little bit of color difference. And that, of course, emphasizes the, the texture difference even more. And as you can see, I started it as a checkerboard and then thought, you know what? I'm interested to see what would happen if I start playing with different stitch combinations. So I did a little section of stripes and then I did or horizontal stripes first. And then I did a couple of little hearts. I knitted in some hearts. And of course, they are linen with a cumulus heart on one side. And on the other side, they are the opposite. It's a cumulus background with a linen heart. Then I did some vertical stripes. And then I did like a little square in a square, which is actually next to the checkerboard, my favorite at the moment. Look, so it's a square in a square. I really like that as well. And then my mind starts racing. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can do that multicolored. Wouldn't that be amazing? Of course, that harks a little bit to the crocheting that I'm doing. And the effect, the, the size of these little squares is similar to little crochet squares. So that kind of confuses everything, but I can't help myself. I just start fantasizing about different combinations. And this is about halfway of the total length that it's going to be. So I then did a little bit of combination rib of the two colors, just a little section to separate. And then the entire second half is going to be back to the checkerboard. And then that would allow me to wear it in different ways and ha either have the checkerboard bit dominant or some of the other designs. It's just a little play. The real value in this is to be able to show you this colorway knitted up. And that's the thing that I can't seem to get enough of um, because I'm offering other color colorways. I'll show some of them here. They're the naturals and there's a mustard colorway. And then there's that really nice dark blue-black color, which I always adore. And uh, there uh, are reds as well. So I love these kind of combinations. And with this more than anything else, because I often do kits in different colorways, and it's to just make suggestions to people of things that they can try and combinations that I think will work really well. And some people love that rather than putting their own colors together. So I've done the same thing with this kit and have created those different color combinations. And with more than any other project, I just want to knit them all. I want to see them all knitted up. So after this uh, bright pink one that I hope to be wearing, it's one of my top colors being a, a cold winter, in terms of uh, the kind of colors that suit me. Um, I'm going to go on to uh, knit another one, maybe the naturals actually. Hmm. That has gets its 
color combination really out of texture again rather than difference between the colors i don't know yet i'll keep you posted i'll put it on instagram as soon as i've decided and maybe i'll do some stash diving and see if i've got any yarns that i have a small only a small amount of that i could use for uh, one of these as well and knit that out of sheer indulgence because one of the advantages of this is that it's a bit like sock knitting you don't really have to pay much attention to it you're doing the same thing all the time so um it's it's great for stressed buster knitting as i call it in the evenings or whenever i have difficulty like quieting down my mind i pick this up and i just let loose on it mindless and keeping my hands busy and loving the uh, the end result of it so that's the progress on my dumbboard scarves and um more of those probably again next time as well because i don't see the end of uh, of of these inside just yet so um that's it i think in terms of knitting and crochet that's all i've been working on um i'm doing a lot of uh winding of mini hanks myself again um at the moment because um of course there's the time and space for that and i uh, don't have to dedicate the time to get ready for uh, Wonder Wool in real life next week. There's just the virtual Wonder Wool, and please do go and have a look at that if you have a chance. Uh, so I'm doing lots of winding of mini hanks, and that probably plays into the obsession of wanting to knit them all. So that's it for the knitting and the crochet. Let's have a look and let's have a play with layering scarves and shawls and that's a combination of things that you will have knitted yourself and things that you've got in your wardrobe so bought scarves and shawls whether they're woven or knitted or crocheted all doesn't make a difference you can combine them all come and have a look with me Okay, so here we are to show you layering of scarves and shawls. I'm going to start with a scarf that I bought years ago at uh, Wonderwall from a designer based in the Shetlands, Nila Nell. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Very, very talented. This is machine knitted. I'll show you a close-up of it and it's a scarf long and relatively narrow and the typical way to wear it would be go like once or twice around your neck maybe tie it and you can see that it's got some interesting color combinations already wearing it like this would be great outside or inside looking good however what if this is not enough or what if you want a particular color in this scarf to stand out to give you an example there's quite a lot of like an apple green in there but there's also this kind of mustardy yellow let me show you what happens when you layer this with something that is a mustard yellow now I'm going with a lot of the layering that I'll be showing you. I'm going for contrast in color, but also very often contrast in texture. So this is knitted out of a very fine yarn, but it's very densely knitted and it's double knitted. So it's different on each side. The scarf that I'm or shawl that I'm going to combine it with is very thin, very sheer and very large. And um, it's a, it's an almost square, it's slightly rectangular. The way I'm holding it here is to grab one side and crumple it up and then just having it hang long. So almost like a scarf. And this is one of the ways that I can combine it with the scarf that I just show you, showed you. It's almost the same length actually when you show it like this. 
what I'm doing is holding them together and twisting them once or so around each other. So I'm getting something a lot more bulky and I can show as much or as little of this scarf as I like. So if I turn it, put it around my neck twice and then start fiddling with both to make sure that I get the colors to dominate that I want to dominate in the end result. Like so. Then I've got a look now because it's a bit more bulky. It's a little bit more difficult to tie. Here's an idea. So you're coming from the right hand side. You go around your head. Now this right side is underneath the loop that's around my neck. I'm going to grab it and not pull it through completely. Just make a little loop here. Then I'm going to take the left end, pull it through those loop, that loop. So this is the loop that's made by that end of the scarf. Pull it through. So all I'm doing is crossing them over, those two, while the big loop is still around my neck. That creates like a makeshift knot. And as you can see here, there's already lots of that um, narrow skinny scarf showing, but I can change that by turning them around each other. So I can pull out different bits of color depending on what I want to dominate in the final effect. See that? And now I've got something around my neck that's a lot more bulky and a lot more warm. However, you don't see a lot extra of this second shawl. And I can change that as well, of course, depending on what you want. So go back to the original, put the narrow scarf over my arm just so it's out of the way. And now I'm going to grab this long rectangle by one point. So the whole thing gets a lot longer because I've effectively created a big triangle. Now I can start draping that around my neck like you would do any big scarf or shawl. See that my ends are longer now as well. So I've got a lot more volume and a lot more width that I can show very loosely without tying it. So now I'm showing a lot of that golden yellow color. And then I can bring in the second scarf and add little pangs of color without completely covering my big shawl. Like this. Of course, I keep trying to look at myself in the camera, which is not easy because it's a little bit too far away to get a big, a better picture. So I'm quickly using my mirror here. So I've got more yellow now and I still have these interesting colors of the original. So the other thing that this does is it separates this scarf from the rest of my outfit. So if I don't like how these colors are playing with the rest of my outfit, Putting a layer in between like that separates it without creating any form of clash. Show you a different example just to see, to show you what big a difference a color makes. I've got another one of these, but it's in a pink, a dusky pink. Dusty pink. Again, holding it by one corner so I've got it long. Whack it around my neck twice. You can do this, of course, with a lot more consideration. You can do this a lot more carefully so that you find that you, you specifically place the points or make sure that they hang over your shoulders or whatever. I'm not doing that on purpose just to show you how easy it is to create, create a good effect without making that much of an effort. So there's number one. Put number two on top. And we've got a completely different effect just by changing one of the scarves. I'm creating a different color play with the rest of my outfit, but I'm also downplaying the green and the yellow that is in this and bringing out the maroon a lot more. 
and the whole thing still goes together really well. So that's a skinny scarf combined with a bigger shawl as an alternative to a skinny scarf that you use together with a bigger shawl that is used as a skinny scarf as well because that's what I showed you first remember by holding this at the you know crumpling up that end together like that turning it into a skinny scarf that is about the same length as this and then wearing those together of course you can also just do your one tie and then putting this on the back and wearing them like that that's all possible the idea is that you play with this and that you combine items that you've knitted yourself with items that are bought. Now, this was a machine knit, but what if we do the same thing with something that is hand knit? Here's a good one. This one is called the Trellis Shawlette pattern on my website, knitted in Soliloquy Alpaca Boo. Same thing applies. This is a crescent shape, a deep crescent. You can go for that effect again of going corner to corner. So I'm creating a big surface to show underneath. And then come over the top with this pretty baby what I'll do to rather than putting it completely on the top I'll put it over the top of my big triangle underneath but then put it under the ends as if I would have put them on together and of course I could have put them on together as in at the same time so there's my pink underneath the label that we use it shows of the trellis shawl that's still attached sitting on the inside where's my end here's my end and then i can knot those together and even though the ends of the trellis shawlet only just reach back to the front because they've got all that bulk of that pink shawl to contend with by just holding them together when I knot all those ends, they get caught well enough to stay together as if they were knotted together properly. And then I can pull out bits of pink here, I've got more green on this side, or I can put more of the pink there as well. You can play with that. Again, the effect is the same. Two shawls completely different from each other one woven and thin one hand knitted worn together however one of these doesn't have to be shop bought if you've got lots of hand knitted items then you can wear all of those together this is a combination that i think i put on instagram the other week of using that same trellis shawlette again wearing it together with a cowl the cowl is knitted in my lovely yak silk yak blend 2 can tie this if i really want to bring the two together do that in the mirror again because I can't quite see what I'm doing. These colours, of course, are a lot closer. There. And all of a sudden, my simple cowl and my one colour shawl look like a multicolour project. See that? And these are not necessarily colours that you would normally grab to put together, but it doesn't matter. Play with them. The more colour you throw together, the better you can't really go wrong and if you're worried about that you can always play it safe by choosing colors 
that come back in both scarves or shawls. You can bring back colors that are in one scarf or shawl in your second one. This is um, a silk, a long silk, oblong silk shawl in red, white and black and blue. Red, white, blue and black. It's actually got a silly rendition of the British flag on it. It's not why I've chosen it. I've chosen it because it's got some strong colours that also come back in this linen number called the Jaga. Knitted in my own three-ply linen yarn and in red and black. And this, of course, is red and black together with blue and white. So if I grab this one in the middle and I grab my jagger in the middle and hold them together, then again, I've got two scarves of fairly similar length. And I can start playing with those, throwing those on together. Can again make use of the fact that they've got that the jagger has got an irregular shape with points sticking out so I can pull those points and make them visible or I can leave them completely hidden and not emphasize them at all. Tying this together again, I keep doing that. It's not something that you have to do. It's just a habitual way in which I wear my scarves and shawls. I put them around my neck twice and then tie them just to hold them in place. But it's not a necessity at all. You could go single with this around your neck, holding them both together as an example, not as a rule, and tying them like that. Showing more or less of the jagger and the silk shawl, depending on what balance you prefer. Now, if I stay with the jagger for a bit, let's combine it with something a bit more further out, further afield. Here's my new Dumbord scarf with its crazy rounded shape. What about wearing those two together? I've got like a pinkish red top on. This is red and black. That's nowhere in my outfit, but this is the dark teal, which is of course the color of my play suit. So if I wear this, then you really end up emphasizing that that red especially is much stronger in color than the rest of the t-shirt. Actually, I'm gonna tie this around my neck a bit more, like I sometimes do at the shows. Start with the big point in the back cross these two in the front and then both put them around again so it's much more bunched up that way and by bunching it up like this there's a lot less emphasis on that red but you still get points sticking out and now I can bring the whole look together by adding my little dark teal. Maybe go around a little bit rather than pulling it up to my neck. By pulling the dark teal up to my neck, of course, I make the whole thing a lot warmer. But if, like now, the temperature is starting to go up a little bit, by pushing the dark teal further to the outside, I have the linen closer to my neck and the warmth of the cumulus a, further, a little bit further away, which makes it a little less warm. This looks good too. 
another layer, extra scarf to show you the difference. So that's the two of them together. If I then take the linen away, and wear the dark teal by itself, you end up with a very different look. See that? There's a richness and an opulence by adding a little bit more here that is very easily done with scarves of different makes and different materials. Here's another example. This was a birthday present to me from my very dear friend, Helen. She's woven this herself out of a combination of hemp, a hemp yarn that I had given her to play with, and a silk yarn that she dyed herself. And the silk is in reds and pinks and a little bit of salmon-y. Actually goes really well with the t-shirt that I'm wearing. Another example of something that works great, just worn by itself. Again, this is a long a narrowish, it's about six foot long. Scarf, could wear it for a summery look, like this. Looks great. Or warm it up a little bit by adding my little dumbboard scarfy. I tell you, those little Domboard scarves are fantastic to add a splash of colour. I haven't quite finished the uh, the bright pink one yet that I showed you, but boy, would that look good in combination with, with what I'm wearing at the moment. I'm going to turn to the mirror again so I can see what I'm doing. So what I'm doing now is creating extra layers of the dark teal in my outfit. So I put the dark teal around my neck twice and then interwoven it, going dark teal, then my hemp, then more dark teal, and then the next layer of hemp. And again, I've created extra warmth and I've brought the dark teal of my play suit back around my neck. Great to as an, as an integrator. The, the outfit was fine without it, but with it, it's just a bit more together still. What else have I got to show you? Um, let's go for this one. That's another one. That's an interesting one to play with. This is again a rectangle, but it's wider. So it's more shawl like. Very fine, woven and stripy rather than solid like that pink and mustardy color were. And let's play, what can we play with that? Well, let's just grab a hand knitted item again. I'll grab the trellis shawlette again. I hope you can tell that you can be pretty indiscriminate as to what you wear together. You can make them work. Add this one. Where shall I go? I think I'll go underneath these ends so I don't lose them. There, how about that? So I actually follow the same sequence of wrapping that I did with the green when I wear, when I wrap the second one. Oh, there's some green in here. It's a different kind of green though. Hmm. I thought by bringing that green and that green together, the green of the trellis shawlette and the big shawl together, I may be able to create a nice emphasis. But actually, I'm not super keen on the green at the end of my stripy shawl in combination with this. So rather than emphasizing it, I can hide it. Look, you just hide it by wrapping this around. This pinky or uh, orangey color, that actually works quite well in combination with my t-shirt. So if I wanted to wear this together today, then by tying this again, I'll, I'll take the end of the trellis shawlette so it doesn't go flying and kind of half knot it together. 
but put this like so, then all of a sudden this becomes a dominant colour in this shawl. Everything else is downplayed. This is brought to the front. That green that I'm not crazy about in combination with the trellis shawlette, it's kind of hidden by it. And this becomes a nice little focal point, pop of colour. I'm wearing my home knit. I'm showing off the green that I really like in combination with the rest. And again, done. Works well. Now, these are both quite large-ish projects. What if I take a large shawl like that and combine it with something small? Uh, oh, here, I've got... I can use another little dumbboard, which is tiny compared to this monster. So let's start with the monster. Otherwise, my little dumbboard will be completely gone. So if I want to downplay the size of this, I can put it around my neck twice and then tie it. I can hide these ends so that I don't see those contrasting colors and just play with the fact that there's blue in there with this oatmeal color. And then I've got blue and white here. Bring this around, tie it just the once. If I spread it out a bit like that, there. I've got my dumb board showing off the colors of that. And I've got the warmth around my neck. And of course I can go the other way again. I can put this closely around my neck and this around the outside if I want to wear them together like that. Or create more contrast by removing this and making it the red one, for example. That I <laughs> Here's one I knitted before. I still haven't started my next one, you know. I'm still battling away to finish the magenta one. I spent hours yesterday evening hand winding some balls of yarn because I love hand winding yarn. Hand winding balls of yarn and making combinations to see if I can work with some yarns from my stash to do a very indulgent one that is not specifically for the business but just for me. Here we go. Red and white, blue and oatmeal, but because it's such a it's such a muted blue, this now becomes an anchor for my play suit. And the red and white is kind of combined with the top. So in terms of color balances, this works really well too. Have I got anything more to show you? Anything more for any one more? Okay, yes, there's one more thing that I want to do which is, again, I'll go for an unusual combination. I'll bring the red and black of the Jagger back and then the silver and the gold of the Nadine cowl. What I want to show you is that one lovely, lovely way to show off a cowl like this. One is to wear it a little bit like a neckerchief, just let it drop. And this is a very drapey yarn the yak silk, the yak blend too. So it just kind of collapses. If I want to show more of this, all I have to do is fill it. I fill it with a different project. Can be anything. The one that I, the stripey, that, that love, lovely soft stripey shawl that I was wearing just now would have been perfect for it. But I don't want to use that on purpose because I want to show you, you can use almost anything. So I put this around my neck and I bunch it. This is not for showing off, it's for propping it up. Propping up my Nadine cowl. So now, ignore this silly label. Now I put the Nadine cowl on and all of a sudden, standing up, see that? It's much more voluminous and it's much more visible around my neck. I don't see anything of what I'm wearing underneath. And of course, that's a choice. I can actually bring that out a little bit and show a little bit around my neck if I want to. But the Nadine cowl has got proper attention. Uh, 
you want to make it really crazy, bring back the color of the play suit with my dark teal. Guys, I'm getting so warm <laughs> showing you this. Bring back the dark teal little gumboard scarfie tied around pop of color right at the top. My Nadine cowl is lovely and propped up by the jagger underneath. Okay, so layer your scarves, layer your shawls, go nuts with your colors. Do color combinations that you never would have thought of. Just play, especially since we're all stuck at home a lot of the time at the moment. This is a lovely opportunity to reinvent parts of your wardrobe and have fun. Distract yourself, make new combinations. And if you're surprised of the combinations that you make, try and record them. Make photographs, take photographs so that you won't forget because you may forget otherwise and then print them off or keep them on your phone and come back to them at a later date for inspiration because a start like this, a combination of a couple of scarves can then inspire the entire rest of your outfit. I hope you stay safe and I hope to see you again in a couple of weeks.